Hi everybody, welcome back. Today's multimeter video is the PDM250A2. This uh, no frills multimeter comes out of Germany and uh, let's get right to it. So first of all, you notice that you've got four input jacks and one really annoying feature of this multimeter right on the get-go is the fact that every time you go from say resistance to voltage, you have to physically remo remove the probe uh, into the proper input. Um, it's easy to forget and it gets to be very annoying. So right off the get-go, that's something that really drives me crazy about this multimeter. Um, the other thing that kind of drives me crazy is the probes it came with. Um, really cheap. I was expecting a lot more, especially being uh, uh, from a Germany. Um, just does not speak quality. I mean, these things are absolute garbage. So uh, first thing you do when you get the meter is you take the probes that it come with and you... Throw it back in the garbage where they belong. Uh, for the rest of the testing, I'm going to be using Sanwa probes. Um, these are TL25As, uh, really nice probes, um, hailing out of Japan. And you know, I just like Sanwa probes. Uh, one of my favorites. What can I say? Uh, any good probe is better than a crappy probe. So uh, don't bog yourself down with uh, useless probes. Uh, if you get a decent multimeter and it has bad probes. Do not hesitate to uh, exchange them for something better. Okay, let's get right to it in terms of testing. Uh, we'll turn this guy on. As you can see, you've got two buttons, one for the auto power on, uh, not auto power on, but auto power off rather, and the on button. And the other is the hold. It's the basic hold, so it's nothing to get excited about. You have to physically hit the hold button. Uh, it's not a touch hold. Um, we have few different things here. We have resistance, a separate battery tester, amps, DC, amps, AC, and voltage AC, DC. Rated for 250 volts max. I have heard for the grapevine that this can go up to 600 volts, although don't take my word for it and don't exceed the 250 volt rating. I'm going to start off with a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the Fluke 87.5. So we'll switch this to voltage, put in the probes, and we'll just see how these two meters compare with one another. The Fluke 87.5 coming out of the United States and the German PowerFix PDM 250A2. So right now we're on the three volt rail and they're pretty close, 3.01 3 to 3.02. 4.5 volt rail, 4.52 to 4.53 on the Fluke. 6 volt rail, 5.99 for the power fix, 6.01 on the fluke, up to 7.5 volts, 7.52 on the power fix, 7.54 on the fluke, so they're pretty well neck and neck. The 9 volt rail, 9.01 for the power fix, 9.03 for the fluke, and finally the 12 volt rail, 12.06 for the power fix, and 12.10 for the fluke. So there you have it in terms of um, uh, Accuracy, it's it's really, really good for voltage. So no complaints there. Obviously, the Fluke 87.5 is the reference standard in this case, but the PowerFix did really, really well. So thank you, Fluke. And back to the PowerFix. Um, besides the nasty probes, the PowerFix also ships with a little user manual in different languages. Once again, this is a pretty sparse meter in terms of features and functionality. You do have a pretty picture here, mind you, but it doesn't go into too much detail. Um, that being said, one of the um, other basic features that any multimeter has is something called continuity. I do a lot of circuit testing myself and continuity is really important for me. So we're gonna try this continuity feature on the PowerFix. So we put it to the continuity setting. We have to put the probe back into the other input. Remember, once again, this voltage input is strictly for voltage and nothing else. I've got the Sandler probes, nice probes, gold tipped. And let's see how we are in terms of continuity. Wow, really slow, unlatched. Oh God, no, I, I could definitely not use this for any sort of testing. Okay, so much for that. Um, the other feature, diode. 
I'm going to take a very low voltage diode. And let's see if we have any illumination. Nothing from this angle. Reverse. And yes, we do. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it does light up this diode. Now there's no terms of uh, voltage reference on the display, but it did light the diode. Um, in terms of the display, it is nice. It's crisp. It's it's bold. It's got good contrast. Um, I like the display. Um, I have no complaints there. Um, that's it in terms of testing. Um, I'm not going to go through too much. Um, actually, what I will do quickly is just the voltage test, a quick demonstration here. If we put it to the standard voltage, I am going to show you how it works. So right now we're in a standard voltage test. I have a 9 volt Duracell battery. We're going to test it here and it's showing up as, oops, forgot to change the probes. That's what I meant by annoying. Okay, once again, 9.20 volts. Now this being a non-auto ranging, I'm going to bring it back to the 9 volt selector. What happens when you go to the 9 volt selector? It's proprietary and all it does is puts a slight load on the battery. So if you have a battery that's starting to fail or maybe iffy, by using this, it can tell you just how accurate or inaccurate it is. Now once again, I have to go back on the input selector. You can see how annoying that can be over time. And 9.17. So even with the load, this 9 volt battery is perfectly fine. So that's a nifty little feature. Um, always great to have. Um, I'm not going to do any other testing. I'm not going to bother with the resistance, what have you. Um, it, it was fine in uh, some prior bench tests I did. What I will do quickly is show you what it looks like on the inside. Because that's always nice. And you know what? There's something really therapeutic about taking apart a multimeter. Uh, to start with, the holster itself, I love it, great, um, nice rubber, good quality, nothing bad to say. The meter itself has a good feel to it, maybe it's a little, shall we say, fugly, but you know what, I kind of like it, kind of grows on you after a while. Um, it's got its own little standing bale, the little recessed, so you can pull it out. Made in soft Germany. Now it doesn't say made in, it just says sauce Germany, but I'm assuming this is German. Manufactured in March of 2015. I've already taken out two threaded screws on the back. They don't go into metal inserts, as you can see. Plastic directly, which is too bad. Um, the back of the compartment, we have a little bit of shielding, only half. So that's too bad. I would have liked to have seen the whole thing shielded. And in terms of input protection, wow, not a whole lot. Um, a tiny little current shunt. That's too bad. Two small ceramic fuses. Uh, I don't see too much here. But wow, that's a really tiny current shunt uh, on the ground. Um, yeah, wow. A trim pot, if you want to do any sort of calibration. Uh, some caps. The IC is here with the infamous glob of glue. And so I have no idea what the IC is on this particular meter. Um, soldering wise, it's okay. It's decent. It's clean. There's no flux residue. But I'm not going to be sticking this into any high powered voltage source. That's for sure. Otherwise, you can call me Sparky. Okay. So there we had a quick look inside. This pretty well wraps up this video. Now, most of my meter videos are based on five star ratings and out of five stars I give the PowerFix PDM 250A2 a 2.5 out of five star rating. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, keep on testing.